Hey there, folks. Today's video is going to be a little bit off the cuff because the video that I was going to release today is taking a little bit longer than expected to edit. But this is a question I get all the time, and I'm finally just going to make a video about it. And the question relates to latency. We talk a lot about latency, like the latency of TBS Tracer versus Ghost versus uh, Crossfire versus SBus, or the latency of a camera. Uh, a, a camera might have 25 or 35 milliseconds of latency. Some cameras might have as low as four milliseconds of latency. And the big question people ask is, in all of those cases, we're talking about a difference on the fastest to the slowest of maybe 30 milliseconds. And people say, does that really freaking matter? Because if you look at research into human reaction time, They'll do a test where they'll they'll blink a light and make you press a button and they measure how long it takes you to press the button. And for a typical person, that may be between like 100 milliseconds if you have really fast reaction time to maybe more typical around 250 or 300 milliseconds for a typical person and then maybe a little slower if you've got particularly slow reflexes. And the argument is that if your typical reaction time is 20, 250 or 300 milliseconds, can you possibly notice any difference in a five or 10 millisecond latency of like the control link or the camera. And you're right. In one respect, you're right. That if what you're talking about is reaction to a stimulus, that additional five or 10 milliseconds of going from, let's say, ghost to crossfire or crossfire to SBUS, that is going to add in there, but it's going to be a very small percent of the total reaction time. But here's why I do think those reaction, those differences in latency matter. And that's the big point of this video. Because what we're doing when we are flying a quad is usually we are not reacting to new stimulus. Like if you're flying a quad and all of a sudden a person pops out from behind a building or like suddenly, boom, there's a branch in front of your face. That is reacting to a new stimulus and reaction time does matter. And in that sense, a little bit of extra latency from your camera isn't going to really make much difference. It's going to be, you're going to be the limiting factor there. But when you are, let's imagine that you are flying and you are not getting any new stimulus because you can see that tree off in the distance and the, whatever, the person walking over there, or, or you're approaching the apex of a turn and you're going to apex around a flag. You, all of that stuff is happening continuously. And in that sense, your reaction time doesn't matter as much as the sort of connectedness of you to the quad, the little tiny motions that you're making, how connected do you feel? And in that sense, the latency of the control link, that little 10 or 15 milliseconds of latency absolutely does have an effect. Um, I'm not just making this up. Linus Tech Tips, one of my favorite YouTube channels right now, he did a test where they examined whether higher refresh rate computer monitors have an effect on gaming performance. And they got one of the top FPS gamers in the world today. Uh, his name is Shroud. He's a streamer. And they put him on monitors with 60 hertz, 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 200 whatever hertz. And they found that the higher refresh rate monitors made a difference. They didn't just make a difference in the ability to react to a new stimulus, like that lower latency does give you a little bit better reaction time, but they specifically made a difference in the ability to track a moving target, continuous motion, and to track it more, more precisely. So what's the takeaway? I'll put a link to that video in the video description if you want to check it out. It's pretty cool. What's the takeaway from this? In my opinion, a difference of 25 or 35 milliseconds can absolutely be felt, at least by me. I'm 100% confident in a blind test that I could tell the difference between like 35 millisecond reduction in latency of the control link. It would just feel different. It would feel more connected. It's not that you can't fly with a higher latency control link. We all remember people who've been in the hobby for five years. Remember when we all flew on PPM? And then we switched to SBUS and we went from like 50 milliseconds of latency down to 25 milliseconds of latency. And we were like, oh my God, this is so much better. But we all flew on PPM with like 50 milliseconds of latency and we somehow did it. You can learn to adjust. And as long as you don't have to make any rapid responses to new inputs, you can anticipate and, and, and compensate for that latency. But the more you 
make unpredictable movements, the more the connectedness of that low latency is going to matter. And and I, def, I, I, I would say by the time you get down to like the four or six millisecond latency of something like Ghost or Tracer, now you're in the era of diminishing returns. But definitely going from like 25 or 35 milliseconds of latency down to 10 milliseconds, I feel like definitely it does matter. And that might be why a pilot like Mr. Steele, who is well known for his very unpredictable quick responses, loves something like Tracer and Analog because the lower latency really matters to his flight style. Whereas someone who does more predictable, flowy, smooth moves might not care as much about the additional latency. Somebody like maybe like Drib, like Drew Camden, he flies DJI, has additional latency, but his flight style doesn't have that kind of, I don't know. That's just hypothetical there. Um, one more thing about latency that we, that we got to talk about, and that is latency is a loop, okay? You got this control loop where you see a stimulus come in to the goggle, right? Your brain processes that. That's your reaction time, your human human reaction time. It goes out your fingers. You move the sticks. The stick movement generates a signal out the controller. That goes into the receiver. That goes into the flight controller. The flight controller processes that. That goes out to the motors. The motors move the props. The quadcopter moves. The video camera picks up the movement of the quad. It transmits it back to your goggles and the loop continues. And when we talk about latency, you need to think about every component in that loop. So if you're flying with a higher latency control link, but you're using a very low latency camera, your net latency may be the same as someone flying with a very uh, low latency control link, but a higher latency camera. So you think about who might a control link like Ghost or Tracer be good for that low latency might help cancel out some of the higher latency of, for example, if you're using the DJI uh, goggles versus a very low latency analog camera. Just something to think about. That's gonna do it for this video though. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts about latency down in the comments. Did I get it right or am I just completely off base? Obviously, I think I got it right, but uh, if you disagree, I will at least read your comment and then argue with you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Happy flying.